Hello everyone and welcome back to this brand new video. In this lesson, we are going to continue creating our games functionality. In this video, we will try to focus on updating the answers as well as displaying the resolution screens. All right, so let's go back into our game manager and let's start writing our update answers methods. So the first method we are going to create is going to be called update answers. So let's go and let's create a new public function and let's call this something like update answers so this function is going to be responsible for updating our picked answers so whenever we're going to check or toggle the new answer we are going to update the picked answers and we are going to add the new picked answer or remove the picked answer from the picked answers uh, list so let's uh, so for the parameter we need to include the answer and that is of course answers data and let's say something like new answer. And inside of this method, we are going to be checking what kind of type of, what kind of answer type this question has. And also uh, we're gonna check if this answer is already picked. And if it's not picked, we are going to, uh, well, first of all, actually let's go and let's determine what kind of type uh, it is. So let's say if questions, which is the questions list, and uh, the element is going to be the current question and then we need to check what kind of answer type this question has and we're gonna check if answer type is equals to single meaning that we can only pick one answer uh, let's then first of all check if there is any already picked answers and if there is we are going to uh, we're simply uncheck all the picked answers and we are going to uh, well check this new answer let's do a for each loop and let's loop through all of the picked answers. So let's say answer, and we need to check the picked answers list. And inside of that list, we need to check if answer is not equals to new answer, which is the new answer that is sent as a parameter. Then what we need to do is we simply need to say answer dot reset, which is we're simply going to uncheck uh, the, the answer if it's not the new answer. Afterwards, we need to clear the list, meaning that if there are any answers already picked, we need to remove all those answers. And then the next thing we need to do is we simply need to add this new answer. So we only have one answer. And this is all we need to do if our answer type is single. So now what if our answer type is not single, but instead a multi-answer type? So if that's the case, then let's do an else statement. Uh, and the first thing we need to determine if this uh, answer is already picked. So let's do a boolean and let's call this something like already picked. And what we need to do then is we need to check if this answer already exists in this picked answers list. And to do that, Let's simply say picked answers dot exist. And this is a method uh, that can check if this, well, we can check if this element is in the list. And we're going to be using Lambda expression. And, um, and to do that, let's say X, and then we use Lambda expression. And then we say if X is equals to new answer. And if that's the case, if it, if it is a new answer, it will return true. And if it's not a new answer, it will return false. So afterwards, we can check if already picked is equals to true. If it is, then what we need to do is we need to remove the answer. So let's simply say picked answers dot remove. And what we need to remove is new answer. But if it's not already picked, then of course we need to add this new answer. And that's all we need to do with this method. We're simply checking what kind of answer type this question has and then we are well updating the answers accordingly so if our answer type is single we're simply clearing the already picked answers and we are updating uh, the answers with a new answer but if our answer type is multi we are simply checking if this answer that we are sending currently exists in the list if it does we are removing this new answer but if it uh, doesn't we simply add this answer to depict answers list simple as that and this is all we need for this function so let's simply collapse this so now the next thing we need to do is we need to create a method to accept answers so let's go and let's 
first of all create a new function let's create a new public function because we will call this function whenever we're going to press this next button so let's go and let's say a new method and let's call this something like accept and in this method the first thing we need to do is of course to check the picked answers so we need to check if the picked answers are correct so let's create a new boolean and let's call this something like is correct and for that we need to create a brand new function that will check if these picked answers are correct so let's create a function that we will call something like check answers so let's go a bit down and let's create a brand new function and let's call this function check answers and this method needs to return a bool value determining if these answers are correct or not correct so let's say that this return type is bool so now what we need to do is we need to create a brand new function and this function is going to compare the answers and uh, this method also needs to have the return type as a bool so inside of our compare answers what we are going to do is first of all we need to check if picked answers dot count is more than zero meaning that we have selected some of the uh, answers if it's not the case if our picked answers dot count is uh, if we haven't selected any answers we of course need to return the false because we haven't picked any answers so it is automatically false but if we have picked answers we need to compare uh, the correct answers with the currently picked answers so first of all let's create a brand new list and this list is going to be the correct answers so let's call this something like correct or let's call this something like c for correct answers and then the correct answers are going to be uh, you're going to need to fetch these correct answers and if you remember if you go to our questions class inside of here we have this list uh, the public list where we are getting the all the correct answers so we are going to call that and let's simply say question or questions then let's say current question and then simply call get correct answers okay so the next thing we need is we need the picked answers and if you remember the picked answers are not integers but instead answer datas but answer datas contains the answer index that we initiate whenever we update uh, the data whenever we instantiate the answer we are putting the index of this answer so what we need to do is we need to create a brand new list of integers and let's call this something like p for picked answers and then what we need to do is we need to first of all access the picked answers and then what we need to do is we need to call this method that is called select but to use this method we need to include a new namespace which is going to be system dot link and link pretty much comes with a bunch of handy uh, methods that we can use one of them is select and this method pretty much does what we expect it simply selects the element uh, from the list and again we are going to use the lambda expression and uh, and what we need to do is we need to select the answer index and then what we need to do is simply convert this to a list so we're simply selecting answer indexes and we are putting into the list all right so now when we have these two lists we can actually start comparing these two uh, lists so what we're going to do is first of all let's create a brand new variable and let's call this something like f and uh, let's say that we want to use something that is called accept an accept method also comes with system.link so let's say c.accept and what this method does is pretty much removes all the elements from this list except of something so what we need to do is we need to delete we need to remove all the elements except the elements that can be found in the picked answers list and then of course we need to convert it to the list afterwards let's create a brand new variable and let's call this something like c for a second and then let's simply do exactly the same thing let's say p dot accept and then of course we want to put this c to remove all the elements except the elements that can be found in the correct answers list and of course we need to convert it to a list uh, at the very end all right so the next thing we want to do the very last thing that we need to do is simply say return and then what we need to do is we need to check if these two lists contains any elements so let's say if first which is f and then we can call this method that can also be found in system.link and it simply checks if this list contains any elements and 
If S, which is the correct answers list, also contains any elements, which in this case, if it doesn't contain any elements, it's simply going to return the state. So if F and S contains elements, then it will return false. If both lists don't contain any elements, it will return true. All right. So afterwards, let's go back to our check answers and let's do simply if compare answers is equals to false, let's simply return false. And if it's not, let's simply return true. And that is all we need to do to check the answers. So let's go back to our accept method. All right. So the next thing we want to do is we want to add this current question to be to the finished questions list. So let's say finished questions dot add and let's simply add the current question all right so the next thing we want to do inside of this function is to update the score first of all we need to create a brand new function so let's go here and let's create a brand new private method and let's call this something like update score so for a parameter we need to determine how much score we need to add or subtract and uh, we are simply going to say score, which is the final score, or actually events dot current final score plus equals, and let's call it add. So if we send the positive, we are simply going to add. If we're sending the negative value, we are simply going to subtract from the final score. And afterwards, we simply need to update our score on our screen. And to do that, we are going to invoke the delegate that is inside of our game events class, which is update score or score updated. So let's go back to our uh, method and let's simply check, first of all, if this delegate is not equals to null. And we can do that simply just by saying if events dot score updated is not equals to null. And if it's not equals to null, let's simply call this delegate. And that's all we need to do. So let's go back to our accept method. And what we need to do now is simply call this function. So let's call update score. And for the parameter, what we need to do is simply determine if our uh, answers are correct. And if our answers are correct, we're simply going to say questions dot current question. And, uh, and we're going to send in the add score. But if our answers are not correct, we are simply going to send in the negative value of our add score which is going to subtract the value from our final score all right so the next thing we want to do is we want to display a new question so for that we need to determine how much we need to wait until the next question so for that we are going to create the enumerator and let's go here and let's create a new uh, enumerator which will allow us to yield for a certain amount of time let's call this something like wait till next round or something like that and then we need to determine how much time we need to wait uh, to display a new question so for that i want to actually create a brand new class so let's go back to our scripts folder inside of our inside unity and let's create a brand new script which we will call something like game utility all right so this class is not going to derive from anything it's simply going to store some of the data and we don't need any functions and what we need to store inside of this class is a public constant value which we will call something like resolution and this is a, and we need to determine the type and this is going to be the float and let's call this something like resolution uh, delay time so how much resolution screen we are going to display how long it will display until we will display the new question and by default let's put it something like one so we are going to display the resolution screen for one second so let's go back to our game manager and inside of our enumerator let's simply say yield return a new wait for seconds and then let's simply say game utility dot resolution delay time and afterwards after we waited a certain amount of time we're simply going to call display to display a new question and that's all we need to do with this uh, with this function so let's go back first of all to our uh, to the top and let's create a new private enumerator and let's call this something like enumerator wait till next round and by default it's going to be null 
and let's go back now to our accept method and let's first of all check if this new variable that we just created is not equals to null meaning that there is something assigned to this uh, enumerator variable then what we need to do is we need to call stop quarantine to stop this current quarantine all right so afterwards we need to say that this variable is going to be equals to this quarantine and then simply call the quarantine and send in this uh, this variable so we simply assign something to this quarantine variable and then we simply start the quarantine so for now that's all we need to do so let's go back to unity and let's actually create a couple of animations to be able to display our resolution screen because at the current moment we can't really display it because we don't have any animations so let's go back to our resolution canvas let's toggle this to be able to view it on our screen let's go back to our resolution screen and let's create a couple of animations to be able to display the screen and then fade out the screen whenever we want to well kind of view the next question so let's go and let's create a brand new folder where we are going to store our animations and let's call this something like animations and let's create a brand new subfolder for storing our resolution animations so now let's select our resolution screen and let's create a brand new animation you can of course try, do something crazy and do much and do something much better but uh, for now we're not going to do anything special we're just simply going to make something well something happens something that will make this game just a little bit more interesting and uh, so let's call this new animation something like resolution a uh, screen pop-up so we are going to call this animation whenever we're going to display the resolution screen so let's add a couple of properties and we need to add first of all uh, something like rotation as well as the scale and as well as of course the alpha because we want to fade in this uh, this resolution screen so by default let's set the scale to be equals to 2 let's set the rotation of the z value to be something like minus 22 and let's set of course the alpha to be equals to 0 and let's also set the time to be something like 15 minutes 15 seconds so at the end it's going to look something like this really simple really basic but it will do the trick for this uh, lesson so the next animation we need to create is for fading out the, the screen so let's create a brand new clip and let's call this something like resolution uh, screen fade out and this animation is simply going to fade out the screen and uh, that's all it's going to do so let's go and let's create let's add a property which is going to be the alpha and then let's simply set the time to be 15 seconds and then let's say that we want to simply fade out this screen to be something like this so really simple but it will do the trick like i said and then we need to create one more animation and um, let's go and let's create a brand new animation and let's call this something like resolution a uh, screen and let's call this hidden and this is going to be a really simple animation it's not, it's not even going to be animation we're simply going to set the alpha to be equals to zero and we don't need this anymore we simply want to make this screen to be completely hidden whenever we're going to play this animation all right so the next thing we need to do is we need to create the animator so let's go and let's open up our animator window and as you can see we have three animations for popping up our resolution screen for fading out and for making it completely hidden so the first thing we want to do is we want to add the parameter and the parameter we're going to add is going to be the integer let's call this integer something like screen uh, state and whenever we are going to update the state we are going to play a different animation whenever the state is going to be equals to zero uh, we are going to play the hidden animation whenever our state is going to be equals to two or more we are going to play the pop-up animation and whenever our state is going to be equals to uh, one we are going to play uh, the fade out animation so let's make a transition from the hidden to a pop-up and let's say something like if our screen state is greater than one then we are simply going to transition to our resolution pop-up screen and we are going to make a transition back if our screen state is simply less than one all right so now let's do a transition from the pop-up to a fade out and the transition is going to happen if our screen state is greater than zero and uh, is less than two 
So if it's equals to one, and then we're going to do a transition back from our fade out to our pop up if our screen state is greater than one. Then let's do a transition from our hidden to fade out, and uh, the transition will happen if our screen state is greater than zero and of course less than two. So pretty much if it's equals to one, and we are going to do a transition back from fade out to hidden if the screen state is simply less than one. So we need to do a couple of more things. The first thing is we need to set the default animation, the default state. And to do that, let's go here and let's say that we want to make the resolution screen a hidden animation to be equals to a default state. So let's simply say that we want to make this resolution screen to be hidden at the start. And the next thing we want to do is we want to go through each of these transitions and make sure to disable has exit time. So let's simply go through each of these transitions and let's disable the has exit time. All right, and that's all we need to do with our animator. So let's go back to our UI manager and let's actually implement this animator to our UI manager so that we can actually control all of this inside of our scripts. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to go to our UI manager actually inside of our UI elements and we need to create a brand new uh, reference to our animator. So let's go here and let's say that we want to have the reference to our animator and let's call this something like resolution screen animator. All right, so now let's go back to our UI manager. All right, so let's go and let's create a brand new private integer and uh, let's call this uh, something like uh, parameter hash and we are going to use this private integer to store the animator parameter hash. This is uh, really more performant than using the string. In this game, it probably wouldn't really matter, but it's really good practice to store the parameter hashes and access the parameters by using not a string, uh, but a hash. So let's do that. Let's simply say something like resolution uh, state parameter uh, hash. And we are going to store this parameter hash on our uh, start method. So let's go and let's create a, a start method. And inside of this method, let's say simply uh, resolution state parameter hash is going to be equals to uh, animator dot string to hash. And as you can see, it simply generates a parameter ID from a string. And for a parameter, we need to put in the parameter name and the parameter name, if you remember, is a screen state. So let's go here and let's simply give it a name, which is going to be green state. And that's all we need to do. So now it will create an ID uh, and it will be the hash. And then we can use the hash to simply access the parameter. All right. So the next thing we want to do is we want to create a method that will display the resolution screen. All right. So let's go here and let's create a brand new function. And let's call this something like display resolution. And if you remember, in, inside of our game events, we have the delegate that we will call whenever we want to display the resolution screen. And for that, we need two parameters. We need the type and we need to score. So let's copy these parameters and let's paste them inside of our method. And what we need to do inside of this method first is to update the UI, which is update the, for example, the information text, uh, the state information text, like if it's a correct answer, if it's an incorrect answer, if it, or if it's a final screen. And also, of course, to update the resolution background color. All right, so let's go back to our UI manager parameters truck. And let's create uh, three colors that we will use uh, to colorize our resolution background, depending on the type. So first of all, let's create a brand new header and let's call this header something like resolution uh, screen options. And right now we need to create three colors. So let's create a brand new color. First of all, let's create a private and this is gonna be color. And let's call this something like correct uh, background color. And then of course we need to create uh, the public getter that will return the private variable. So let's go and let's copy this and let's paste it two times. And the second color is going to be incorrect background color. And the final color is going to be something like final background color. And this color is going to be used whenever we're going to display the final uh, resolution screen. All right. So now we can go back to our display resolution and let's go and let's create a brand new method to update uh, the UI, which let's call something like update resolution uh, UI. And for the parameters, we of course need to determine what kind of type and also we need to determine 
the score. So let's go and let's create, first of all, a switch statement and uh, let's switch between the type and uh, let's update the UI depending on what type it is. So let's say, for example, if our resolution screen type is correct, then let's first of all, let's update the background to so let's say UI elements dot resolution background dot color is going to be equals to parameters dot correct background color. Then what we need to do is we need to update the resolution state information text. So let's say UI elements dot resolution state information text dot text is going to be equals to so something like, for example, correct. And the very last thing that we want to uh, display is, of course, the score. So let's go here and let's say UI elements dot resolution score text dot text is going to be equals to something like, for example, plus and plus the score that we send as a parameter. So let's copy this one and let's paste it to the incorrect type. We need to change is, of course, the background color to incorrect background color. Then the text needs to be something like, uh, for example, wrong. It will indicate that we answered the question wrong. And for the resolution score text, we simply need to say something like minus because we are subtracting the score from the final score. And what we need to do now if our resolution screen state is finished is simply something like well, first of all, we need to update, of course, this the background to a final background color. Let's update the state information text to something like final uh, score. And uh, we are not going to just update the resolution score text. But what we are going to do is we are going to implement a new enumerator that will kind of have this calculate effect. So let's go and let's create a brand new enumerator. And let's call this something like calculate a score and as you remember we are storing the final current game score inside of our game events so we don't really need to send in any parameters but the only thing that we want to do is first of all let's say variable a score value first of all let's set it to equals to zero and then let's create a while loop so while our score is less than events dot current final score what we are going to do is we are going to say score value plus plus and then what we need to do is we need to first of all update of course the, the score on our screen so let's say ui elements dot resolution score text dot uh, text is going to be equals to score value dot to string and then it's really important that you yield so simply say something like yield return uh, null so it will yield for a single frame pretty much. All right, so let's go back to our update resolution UI and let's simply say something like start current team. And then of course the current team that we want to start is calculate score. All right, so the next thing we want to do if our resolution screen type is final, we need to display our finish UI elements. So let's say UI elements dot finish UI elements. And then let's simply say game object set active let's set it to equals to true so the next thing we want to do is we want to display our high score of course we are currently not setting any high score but we will do that in just uh, in the future so let's say something like high score text uh, first of all we need to enable it so let's say ui elements dot high score text dot set active equals to true and then of course we need to display the high score so let's put in some sort of a comment something like this play high score so currently we can't really display the high score because we are not really setting any high score and we will set the high score using player prefs and player prefs is a really simple way to store data that is something like high score or something like that first of all let's go to our game utility and let's create a brand new public constant string and let's call this something like save a pref key because of course the player prefs, uh, whenever we, for example, save the value using the player prefs, you need to send in the key and the value. It is always better to kind of cache this uh, key in so you wouldn't misspell it in, for example, in other scripts. So let's call it something like game, uh, high score, uh, value. All right, so we stored our uh, high score value key. 
So what we can do now is we can go to our UI manager. First of all, we need to access our high score. We need to get our high score. First of all, let's create a brand new variable. Let's call it something like high score. And we can access the value using player prefs dot get int because we are going to store the integer and the get int uh, requires you to put in the key and the key that we will reference is the one that we store inside of our game utility so let's simply say game utility dot save preference key and now when we have the high score we can simply go and we can display the high score obviously currently we're not setting any high score at the moment but we will do that in just a minute so let's go here and let's say ui elements dot high score text dot text and what we need to do here is we need to display the high score but we need to kind of also determine if our high score is the new high score and what we need to do is we need to compare the start high score with our new high score so for that what we need to do first of all is we need to go to our game events and we need to first of all create public variable which will be the public integer and let's call this something like startup high score and whenever we're going to start a new game, we are going to cash in the startup high score. So whenever we're going to finish the game, we are going to compare uh, the new high score to our startup high score. And if our new high score is more than startup high score, we are going to display that our high score is actually a new high score. So let's go into our UI manager. And what we can do is we can simply say if high score, which is the high score that we just got, from here is more than events dot startup high score if that is the case what we are going to do is we are going to say something like a uh, new high score um, first of all let's add in the color to something like yellow and this is pretty much the rich text uh, tags and you can learn about it by going to unity's uh, or text mesh pro documentation i can i'll leave a link in the description hopefully um if not you can simply search for something like text mesh pro rich text tags or something like that so we say that we want to make something yellow which is in yellow color and what we need to turn yellow is something like uh, new and then of course we need to close in uh, the tag we need to close the tag so that uh, everything inside of this tag is going to be in yellow color so e everything outside of this tag is going to be the color that we set in the text options so let's go and let's say something like uh, first of all we determined if our high score is more than startup high score and if it is we are going to simply put in the new uh, keyword but if it's not new we're simply going to add nothing so we're gonna say string.empty and afterwards we of course want to say plus and then we want to say something like uh, high score uh, plus and then of course the high score and that's all we need to do inside of our update resolution UI method. So inside of our display resolution function, uh, we of course need to call our update res UI uh, function. And for the parameters, we simply can put in the type and the score. And this is our, the parameters that we passed to this function. And of course, afterwards, we want to display the actual uh, resolution screen. So we need to set the animator parameter to be equals to two. So let's go and let's say UI elements dot uh, resolution screen animator dot set integer. And then we will use the parameter hash that we stored on the start so let's simply say and let's put in the resolution state parameter hash and then let's simply set the value to be equals to two we are going to display the pop-up animation all right so the next thing we want to do is we want to disable the main game functionality and we will do that by simply saying ui elements dot main canvas group and then let's simply say something like block raycast to be equals uh, to false so it will not receive any input so if we're gonna for example try to press the button inside of our main canvas we won't be able to do that all right so the next thing we want to do is we want to determine if our uh, type is not equals to finish we are simply going to fade out the resolution screen in a certain amount of time so let's say if the type is not equals to finish fade this screen out in a certain amount of seconds so for that we of course need to create a brand new enumerator that will do just that so let's simply say and let's create a brand new enumerator and let's call this something like display timed resolution and we can simply do then inside of this enumerator we can simply just yield return a new 
And then what we need to return is of course the new wait for seconds. And for the time, we are going to use the the time that we stored inside of our game utility, which is the resolution delay time. And afterwards, we are simply going to say UI elements dot resolution screen animator dot set integer. And then we're simply going to set our screen to be equals to one, which is going to fade out this resolution screen. And of course, afterwards, we want to make sure that our main canvas is again active or interactable. So let's simply say the main canvas group dot block raycast is going to be equals to true. All right, so inside of our display resolution function, let's simply call this enuminator. Uh, but the first thing we of course want to do is we want to create uh, the variable, which is the private enuminator. And let's call this something like enuminator display time resolution. So let's go back here. And uh, the first thing we want to do is of course to check if this variable is not equals to null. If it's not equals to null, we are simply going to stop whatever is reference inside of this variable. So we're going to stop the quarantine. And afterwards, we're going to, well, simply set the quarantine. So let's say something like display time resolution. And the very last thing is, of course, starting the quarantine. And then we're going to pass in this variable as a parameter. And we are going to uh, not stop, but start uh, the quarantine. And this is all we need to do inside of this function. All right, so the next thing we want to do is of course we want to call this method. And to do that, we are going to of course use the game events. And inside of this game events class, we created this delegate which is called display resolution screen. So we need to go to our UI manager and inside of our on enable and on disable, we want to subscribe to this delegate. So let's simply say events dot display resolution screen plus equals to subscribe. And then let's simply say display resolution. And of course, on disable, we need to make sure to unsubscribe so that we wouldn't get any issues. All right, so let's go back to our accept function and let's actually display our resolution screen. All right, so before we display the resolution screen, we need to determine the type of resolution screen we want to display. So first of all, we need to determine if we have finished the game. And for that, we need to create a getter which is going to be a private bool. And let's call this something like is finished. And then we can say get. And in here, we're going to determine if we have finished the game. And we're going to do that by checking if finished questions.count is less than questions.length. Uh, if that's true, we are going to simply return false, meaning that we haven't finished the game yet. And if it's not true, meaning that the finished questions is uh, not less than uh, the actual amount of questions that we have, then we're simply going to return true, meaning that we indeed finished the game. So now inside of our accept function, let's create a brand new uh, variable. Then let's call this something like type. All right, so now what we're going to do, so let's call our is finished. And if finished is equals to true, then our type is going to be uh, of course finished because we have finished the game but if it's not we need to determine other resolution screen is going to be and we're going to do that by checking if our answers are correct if our answers are correct we are going to display the correct screen and if it's not we are simply going to display the incorrect screen all right so after we determine what kind of type it is we can actually call this delegate so let's go here and let's first of all check if events dot display resolution screen is not equals to null. If it's not equals to null, let's simply call this delegate. And for the parameter, we of course need to reference the type. So let's say type and then the score and the score we are going to put in is going to be the question at score. If we are going to display the finish resolution screen, we are simply going to use the score that is stored inside of our game events, which is current final score. So we're not going to use this score that we pass as a parameter. We're only going to use the score parameter value if we display not a finished screen, but instead like correct or incorrect screen. So let's actually go to Unity and let's see if this works. Let's see what happens if we try to play the game. So first of all, let's make this resolution screen to be invisible. Then let's go to our managers and let's set some of the references. The first reference is of course the animator. 
So let's put the resolution screen uh, animator as a, a reference. And then of course we need uh, the background colors. So for the colors, for the correct background color, let's use something like a green color, something like this. Uh, for the incorrect, let's use something like a red color, uh, something like this. And for the final is going to be, of course, the one that we are currently using, which is something like this. So let's simply copy this and let's paste it as the final color. And this is all we need to do. So now let's actually go to our play mode and let's see if this, well, kind of works. And actually, it's not going to work because we are currently uh, not accepting any answer. So let's go to our main canvas. Let's find the accept uh, button, which is this button. And let's add on click event that whenever we're going to click this button, we are going to call game manager dot accept. And I believe this is all we need to do. I'm not sure, but uh, let's actually go to prefabs and let's check the answer prefab. And this look that everything is in place. So let's try to press play and let's see what happens. So now we have this question, which is two plus two. And of course, the correct answer is four. So let's simply press four and we cannot press four. Let's see why. Oh, of course, we cannot uh, press anything because currently the resolution screen is on top of the main canvas. So what we need to do is we need to disable a block recast. So let's go back to our animations which is inside of our resolution screen. And whenever the screen is going to be hidden, for example, let's set the block raycast to be equals to false. Whenever we're going to fade out the screen, let's set the block raycast also equals to false. And whenever we're going to display the resolution screen, let's make the block raycast to be equals to true. Or we can even do something like this to be true right away. We can try to play this game again. And now as you can see, we can press all the buttons just fine. So let's press four and let's press next. All right, all right, so the first issue is of course the fact that the animation is looping currently. So let's go and let's disable the loop time. All right, so before we actually test the game, we forgot to do one important thing is uh, if you go back to our game manager, what we forgot to do is we forgot to subscribe to our delegate that updates the answers. So let's go here and let's first of all implement two functions, which is on enable and on disable. All right, so inside of these functions, let's simply say events dot update question answer plus equals to subscribe. And let us simply put in our update answers function, which is this function. And then of course on disable, we are simply going to unsubscribe. So right now we are actually going to update the answers. We can actually test or compare the answers whenever we're going to try to accept or go to the next question. So let's go back to our play mode and let's see what happens right now. All right, so uh, we have the question, which is two plus two, and we already know that the answer of course is four. So let's press four and let's press next. As you can see, we have this resolution screen, which says that we answered the question correctly and we gain 10 points. As you can see, we have the next question, which says choose the correct answer. And of course, and for this question, the correct answer is here this one, but let's try, for example, to pick the wrong answer to see if we get the wrong resolution screen. Or for example, let's say we picked two of these answers, press next. As you can see, we compared the answers and the answers are not the same. So we haven't answered this question correctly. All right, so we have the final question currently have no correct answers. So let's, for example, go here and let's say that the answer to this awesome question is going to be equals to this one. So if you're going to press on this answer and we are going to press next, and as you can see, we are finishing the questions and we displaying the final screen. Uh, so our score is minus 10, which I'm not sure if it's correct. Let's try to, for example, play the game again. So let's say that, of course, this is the right answer. So we gain 10 points. Uh, so let's choose the correct answer. And the correct answer is this one. And we gain another 10 points. And of course, this is the correct answer. And our score is 10, which is definitely not correct because we gain 10 points for each question. So we are currently doing something not correct. So considering that we are storing data inside of the uh, game events, which is the scriptable object, 
the data is going to persist and is not going to reset whenever we're going to reset the game. So what we need to do, we need to go to our game manager and at the start of the game, what we need to do is we need to reset uh, the current final score to be equals to zero. All right, so let's go back to Unity and let's see if this solves the problem. So let's go to play mode and let's try to answer some questions. So we already know the correct answers. Uh, apparently not. All right, so we should have 20 points and we don't. All right, so apparently the score is displaying correctly this time. I'm just uh, not really smart. But uh, for example, if you go to our play mode, as you can see, the current final score is at the start of the game is set to zero. So if you, for example, pick the right answer, we gain 10 points and then another 10 points and then another 10 points. So in total, we have 30 points. And as you can see, the final score is now 30 points. So the score is, of course, displaying correctly. All right, so let's go back to our game manager and let's make this variable to be invisible. So I think that we are going to end it in this lesson because it's probably going to be quite long already. Uh, in the final lesson, which is the next lesson, we should be able to finish the entire functionality and then move on to the final things like audio manager and maybe improving everything slightly and uh, finishing the series. Uh, so thank you for watching. I hope you like this series. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and found it useful. And I'll see you very soon in the next lesson.